guys, Brian here at 3TR and welcome to another episode of Superman Month and this time I'll be reviewing the sequel to Superman 1 simply titled Superman 2. Now this movie was released in 1980 and was directed by, or at least this version was directed by Richard Lester and to its core the cast is about the same with the addition of Terrence Stamp as a General Zod. Now, if you're watching this video, uh, I'll take it you've already seen this movie, so I don't have to worry about talking about spoilers in terms of the plot. Uh, preferably, a good amount of this movie really connects well with the first one because it shows really how Zod and his little Scooby gang got thrown into the Phantom Zone by uh, Superman's father, Jor-El. And, you know, it shows Superman doing what he does best when he saves Lois Lane from a bunch of French terrorists who have taken... Uh, an atomic bomb. What he does is he goes in the Eiffel Tower, he takes the bomb, he shoots up into space, it explodes, and however, I'm guessing the atomic blast somehow releases Zod and his allies from the Phantom Zone. They fall down to Earth, they preferably want to take it over somehow, Superman is completely unaware of this is going on, and he decides, you know, I want to be a flow of slain. And she finds out who he is by, you know, one means or another, which, you know, I'm sure you already know. And, he's, and he says, you know, I'm going to get rid of my powers. And when he does, he then starts to see exactly what it's like to be a normal human being when he gets his ass handed to him in a bar by this big trucker-looking look, guy. And then he f discovers that Zod has taken control of the White House, and now... And it, the, funny, the great thing about this particular Superman movie, at least in my opinion, is that it goes over one of the single greatest superhero arcs of all time, which is something that a lot, of a lot of Marvel characters don't ever have to worry about. And that is the choosing which is more important to a superhero. Is it their own personal needs or is it really the needs of many people? And this is real more evident. The fact that Superman chose to get rid of his powers to be with Lois Lane really puts her in danger because now he cannot protect her or the people of Earth, which he promised he would do. And so he has to give up his own personal desires in order to serve the needs of the American people and of the world, which is really what Superman would symbolize. And it's that internal struggle which really makes Superman one of the key, like, if not greatest superheroes of all time, you know, maybe slightly below Batman in my personal opinion. And <laughs> that's really what this movie does very well. Uh, I think that for its time period, it was shot very well. They, there are a couple of green screenshots which look kind of... And there's some wiring issues and some, you know, filming issues. Now, I'm not, now before I go any further, I would just like to state that, yes, I'm aware that there is a Donner edition. And there are a bunch of, a number of scenes which have been changed from the uh, what they were originally supposed to be. But I'm going to wait until I actually see that version. I have seen the changes that were done between the Lester and the Donner version. And in a whole, I actually would prefer this version more. Simply because in terms of the tone that these particular scenes add, feels like they would connect more with the first movie than if you have the Donner scenes connecting with the first movie. Even in the fact that he directed the first movie. And I just felt that those scenes were a bit more, less family friendly, let, let's, let, I'll, I'll just say it that way. Uh, the performances in the movie are all great. I, I think that the clear performance is a Terrence Stamp's uh, performance of Zod, the whole kneel before Zord, is just kind of make that character iconic, although I don't remember Zod ever saying that in the comic books. Let me know if he ever has. And, uh... Furthermore, I think that this is probably, the, you know, I, another reason I think it's a great, a, you know, it's one of the key movies that I think all Superman fans need to see is because I'm pretty sure that Man of Steel, which comes out in June, is going to be a combination of both Superman 1 and 2. It kind of goes over Superman having to become Superman along with him having to battle Zod, which are really the two highest points of both these films. If you have not seen this movie, I absolutely suggest that you check it out uh, any way you can. Download it illegally, steal a copy from a friend, or just watch it on Netflix. And I'm happy to give Superman 2 a very well-deserved A+, 
pro it's it's absolutely in my top 10 favorite superhero movies of all time. And if you like this review, please like, comment down below, and please subscribe to Track TV and my future episodes of Superman Month. And please join me next next Wednesday when I give you my review of the downward spiral of Superman films. Oh, when I see Superman 3. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next week.